when uh, the, the United Nations uh, Convention on the Law of the Sea was negotiated and uh, the text of the convention agreed upon uh, finally in 1982, uh, resources, uh, uh, living resources from uh, the deep ocean were unknown. But uh, towards the end of the 70s, uh, new scientific discoveries uh, identified novel forms of life, novel in the sense that they were unknown to us uh, uh, to that point, at that point in time. And uh, uh, those are systems which develop uh, um, uh, along uh, the the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and uh, other uh, uh, ridge systems uh, in all oceans of the world. And uh, essentially we are talking about uh, microbial communities that uh, utilize uh, chemical energy to grow. And around those communities uh, we find macrospecies which are um, similar to the ones uh, we find uh, in uh, shallower waters like uh, shrimps and mussels, uh, but that's just a, uh, the way they look. Uh, actually, their metabolism is totally different. So uh, uh, the, the international community was faced with a, uh, a situation uh, which, which, which I define ironic. On the one hand, we discovered uh, new resources which uh, hold uh, unique um, uh, properties, they, those uh, forms of life are able to resist uh, extreme temperatures, extreme pressure, uh, um, high levels of toxicity, and therefore they are very uh, of interest, of great interest to industry, uh, like uh, big pharma companies uh, and, uh, and, and also other industrial uh, applications. But on the other hand, there is no legal regime for those resources, because if we look at uh, the current legal regime, uh, in terms of uh, resources from the deep sea bed in areas beyond national jurisdiction, uh, the Convention on the Law of the Sea only refers to non-living resources, for which we have a dedicated authority, the International Seabed Authority. So the international community uh, and the Global Forum uh, with its network of scholars uh, is, is trying to find a solution to uh, that legal uh, and policy gap. And uh, uh, one possible solution comes from uh, the scientific uh, community in the sense that uh, scientists have developed uh, their own code of conduct for studying those resources according to practices which are, which are respectful of the environment. And that's a first step. Another important step would be to define uh, rules uh, and possibly regulations uh, to determine who has access to those resources. And once those resources are used to develop commercial uh, products, then uh, another issue that needs to be elucidated is uh, how one would uh, share the benefits arising from the utilization of that particular resource. So I see that as a challenge, but also as a great opportunity, because this is really what I consider to be the, the last frontier, uh, the deep ocean.